Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the second webinar of Global Logics 30 Hack West, a hackathon, a 30 hacks, uh, 30 hours hackathon. And I would like to invite Ruchi Manan Chaudhary, uh, AVP Marketing Communication Global Logics, along with me. Hi, hi, Ruchi. Hi, Samkit. Yeah. So, uh, like, the stage is yours, Ruchi. How? So we so we are just, just a quick recap. So we will be like deep diving into the tracks today, and along with like all our waiting, the top top teams which will be taking part in 30 hours hackathon. Over to you, Ruchi. Thank you, Samkit. Thank you, and uh, everybody who's watching, welcome to the second webinar of Global Logic 30 Hacks. Uh, Digiverse Unleash Potential. We are very excited. We're going to announce our top teams today. Looking forward to it and uh, looking forward to spending the next quality minutes with you. I have a few colleagues of mine that I would like to bring up on stage and then guys, you can take them back. But I want to introduce to you quickly the leadership team at Global Logic who uh, is going to spend some time today talking to all of us. Uh, we have uh, Ajit Mahale, Amit Kale, Ashish Panpalia and Gaurav Gupta. Team, can you get everybody on? Hi, Ajit. Uh, Amit, Ashish, and uh, Gaurav. Hi, Ashish. Hi, Amit. Hi, Gaurav. So, Hello, thanks. everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Thank you, Ajit. We're all, we're all going to spend about 10 minutes each and uh, take you through. We're very excited to be here and uh, we are very, very excited and we want to thank you together for, we got hundreds of registrations, actually uh, close to thousands of registrations actually, and uh, hundreds of you nominated ideas. Some of you took the plunge and have nominated really, really good ideas, have gone out of your comfort zone. Thank you for doing that and uh, good luck and all the best to all the teams who nominated. We are very excited. We also want to take today's session and introduce the five tracks to you. So what we'll do in the next one hour is cover all the tracks and details, talk about global logic and 30 hacks, and then of course, give you some key announcements like everybody kept asking who are the key celebrities coming on the event. We're going to announce some of that uh, in today's session, right? So without further ado, I'm going to bring up my slides and take you through a quick introduction. And many of you last time were keen on knowing about global logic job openings, what does Global Logic do? What are the different offerings we have? So I thought, why not this time we start with talking about 30 hacks a little bit and talking about Global Logic a little bit. So I'm going to quickly bring up my screen. Just allow me a second. All right. Okay. So I hope my screen is visible. If any of you gentlemen can call it out if it's visible to you. Yes, Uchi. It is Uchi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So um, we are all geared up and uh, we are going to deep dive into the Digiverse today. Before we do that, a uh, lot of questions last time. And guys, we were very, very uh, enthused to see how many of you wanted to know about Global Logic, how many of you wanted to know about the opportunities with Global Logic. I think before all of that, it's important to know who we are. So I'm going to leave it to a quick video to do the talking. It talks about our presence, it talks about our work, it talks about our culture and people. So I'm just going to play this quick video, get some energy in all of you, and then we move forward. Right? So I'm just going to play this quick video for all of you.
thank you and we are global logic so we are if you want to be doing great work building great products i think hackathons and codeathons are a way of our lives so everything that you saw in the video is just a glimpse of who we are how we work what our culture is so just very happy to share this with you and um, and we'll talk more we'll take questions we'll just couple of quick hygiene announcements we'll take a lot of questions towards the end but if we see anything which is relevant to what the speaker is speaking leave us a comment on the comment box everybody who's watching us on linkedin or youtube just leave it in the comment box and the team is going to pick it up uh, i am going to bring my screen back up and talk about the theme a little bit sure okay so oh, sorry. sorry about that <clears throat> all right so we did talk about this the last time just real quickly our hack this time is around the uh, around digiverse this is a western region hack we really want to explore the potential of the western region these are the five hacks in focus automotive healthcare telecom industrial and finance our d day for the hackathon is the weekend we are going to have our final hack final teams hack on the weekend coming weekend and uh, without further ado i think we'll start with telecom amit if you if you want to start speaking i'm going to move the slides for you one quick one quick call out team uh, i think this is for hack to skill team team do you have a background music on yes can you please switch it off because there is a background music i can hear all right amit all yours welcome and you you can pick it up from here amit thank you so much ruchi uh Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to 30 Hacks uh, Digiverse theme for West region in India. And thank you for your time for being on the call. Uh, we'll do a deep dive next few minutes on the automotive. Right, as we all uh, also can relate to this topic uh, as a users or as the buyers of this, right? So as you know, vehicles are evolving and becoming more and more software centric. And basically, Ruchi, can you move to next slide, please? So, you know, vehicles are evolving and they are becoming more software centric. Software is transforming the completely automotive industry. Just imagine that you want to buy a new car. You primarily look for features powered by software. For example, hey, what is the input and screen size? Hey, what is the operating system running on it? Hey, whether it is compatible with my mobile phone? Hey, what is the instrument cluster? Hey, is it digital? Am I having a digital cockpit? Is it going to have, you know, driver assistance system? What kind of a safety it is offering beyond the airbags or the good uh, built of the car? What kind of a connectivity it is having? How the mobile app for the car provides? What is the user experience and what are the features provided by? And no more, you really look for features like, hey, what is the engine power? Obviously, because that comes as a de facto and that is how this automotive industry is evolving and it is becoming more and more software driven. There are key aspects we'll touch what the trends will look into the, you know, automotive industry. One is autonomous, the personalization and the automated driver assisted system features, visualization, machine learning based driver monitoring, front and back. There are so many cameras, right? So you continue to monitor your car real time. You get a bird eye view, you get a surround cameras, you have virtual assistance integrated, so you can really, you know, perform the operations using the voice assistant, right? Sitting in the car or you're sitting in your living room or in the office, let's say it is a summer in Nagpur and then you call, hey, start the AC. And before you get into the car 10 minutes in advance, you put your AC on. So there's a lot of convenience happening. There's a telematics, which is powering your emergency services during the accident. It is enabling the remote diagnostic functionality, OTA software updates connectivity using the 4G, 5G and the other stuff. At the same time, integration with the hyperscalers on the cloud side. And there's so much of data, right? The, every moment you are collecting enormous data. So how do you analyze that big data? How do you put, you know, your AI ML engines so you can make real time decisions? Car can help us and, you know, it can get into the more and more autonomous mode. So that's the trend overall we are looking at. And while it is evolving, we also see the automotive industry is facing challenges. I'm not talking about the cheap availability. Everybody's aware of that. I'm talking about 
how do we integrate newer technologies in a quicker fashion in more affordable ways in the existing manufacturing processes and products and that's where global logic product digital engineering services company come into the picture in next slide we will talk about that with over 20 million vehicles next slide please with over 20 million vehicles on the road powered by global logic software we help uh, oems that is the tier one as well as the suppliers aftermarket service providers to make connected autonomous smart and electric mobility possible we help our clients redefine the connected car experience we are having a team of 3000 plus engineers spread across the globe in north america in the europe and in the asia pacific our teams bring the deep expertise across the multiple areas, including digital cockpit, connectivity and telematics, electronic control units, advanced driver assistance systems, virtual maintaining training, design in styling. There are two key things happening in parallel in the automotive world. There is more compute power you are getting. At the same time, the evolution of the autonomous cars. In India, we see that there are a lot of autonomous car level two getting launched and level three are in progress. Global Logic is already working on level four and level five autonomous vehicles with the leading European brands and the German car manufacturers where the vehicle would be completely autonomous. At the same time, you are getting more and more power on your chip. We see that most of the cars are using the third generation uh, ECUs, that is the electronic control units, which are connected via various networks. In the fourth generation, which some vehicles are already started manufacturing and integrating, there is a central domain controller that manages all the interaction throughout the vehicle. And eventually, we will see the fifth generation system, uh, you know, that runs on a highly redundant computing platform, which will enable a lot of technologies like how do you compute age uh, on the age, right? How the vehicle is moving. Right, you are doing the lot of compute on the edge instead of doing on the controller side or on the you know on your back end side. And that's where global logic comes into the picture. We provide the full software lifecycle coverage right from the requirement engineering, modeling, simulation, functional safety. We do a lot of AutoSAR based both classic and adaptive development and provide V model testing and validation and very verification, integration, following all the prevalent standards in the automotive world. So what are we looking for? During the 30 hacks, what we are expecting that, uh, you know, how you are going to use this more compute power and the advanced technology to provide solutions related to the autonomous car, or you are solving some of the problems on the infotainment, you are enabling some services on the telematics, or you are going to provide the features which enhance the safety and the convenience to the car driver or the passenger. So we are looking towards pretty excited to see some of the use cases where you are trying to touch one of the area that I mentioned and uh, wish you all the best. And I'm sure it would be an experience to be part of it and look forward to interact with you again as we get on this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amit. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to quickly glance through if there are any questions at this point around automotive. I think we should quickly pick those up. And uh, I do. Some kids and please prompt to us if there is anything specific to automotive. I'm going to move back to the presentation meanwhile. And um, just give me one second and, and see who our, who our next speaker is. Uh, Amit, if you can also glance through the questions, anything that you feel you want to answer at this point. I'm going to invite uh, Gaurav next. We're going to talk about healthcare. And uh, uh, I call Gaurav Gigi. So I'm, Gigi, you want to uh, you want me to bring up the slides right away? or you yes. want to? Yeah, Ruchi, if you can just bring up the slides, I'll talk about it. Sure. And in the meantime, since you're bringing the slide, good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining the session. And I'm super excited, you know, uh, to not only see the results, but also, uh, you know, hear more and see you guys at the actual hack. Uh, this is this is really exciting for me. And just a small incident to share. Uh, on the day one, when I joined Global Logic, uh, Ruchi is a party to that. Uh, I was invited to the jury table to, you know, evaluate uh, the hackathon that was going on on that day. So my first day in Global Logic was 
uh, associated with hackathon so that's a very sweet memory of mine and i'm always excited to be part of any hackathon that we conduct so we'll talk about little bit about healthcare guys uh, healthcare you know post covid has taken a lot of traction all of us are aware of it healthcare as an industry uh, just to throw some numbers over there uh, is growing at a rate of 5% cagr right so as of 2022 if my memory goes right Uh, the market share was around 8.7 trillion and it's supposed to cross 11.2 trillion in another 3 years from now so there's a lot and lot of potential for all of us in this industry and that is where global logic come into the picture the numbers that you see on the screen is some of our experience that we have in this specific industry uh, wherein we have a strong task force of 2000 professionals working across the globe uh, we have 150 plus uh you know products created for our customer uh if you have noticed on our video we mentioned about creating next generation products and solution for our customers or the clients but we are actually if i tell you really we are actually creating future generation products okay it is not even next generation future generation products and some of the examples you know the the robotic arm the surgery that happens to robotic arm the software behind that scene is built by global logic that's a very small example there are a lot of implants that we use for hearing aid devices those implants the software behind those implants are built by global logic and that is one of the reason where this vertical is very close to us because we are directly touching human life right we are directly touching human life so we are present in all the areas of healthcare as an industry whether it be building software for medical devices whether it providing health solutions in terms of practice management or employee health records whether it is in the life sciences and the pharma industry whether it is drug manufacturing clinical trials etc everywhere global logic is providing solutions in and out to our customers every day and the reason why it is happening is because global logic as an organization believe uh, in the amalgamation of physical and digital which is omni channel omni omni channel for a lack of better word is the way to enhance a value proposition in this space right because if we are trying to touch human life then we have to provide value based care with patient being the center focus right that's that's how we look forward to this industry and the solution that we provide and as uchi will slide on to the next slide you will see you know how we are providing value based care uh, to everyone on the planet with the solution that we create through our clients for our clients rather for example remote access to telemedicine very common my mother used this solution as of today even in india right there's a lot of focus in the industry on you know how do you manage the data and transpose the data across various systems because of the compliance standards and interoperability of data has taken a lot of focus and a lot of solutions are being built around it right if you put patient as the central focus then from an experience perspective i the time i want to check in into an hospital and the time i want to check out the experience has to be unified whether i am checking into the hospital or ruchi is checking into the hospital or my mother is checking into the hospital the experience has to vary depending upon the age demographic etc etc so how do you make it a unified experience based on the demographics of the patient those kind of solutions are required when we talk about uh, you know medical devices lot of focus is there on uh, iot or iomt for that matter wherein we are building solutions for our customers uh, in terms of you know the implants that go into the body of the human right when we talk about pharma or uh, life sciences there's a lot of focus on data analytics because uh, in any pharma or a clinical trial process there's a lot of data that gets generated and a lot of decision making is required on that data in today's world we are talking about accuracy in diagnosis process right so a lot of data analytics is required and there are a lot of ideas that i have seen through that have come from this group and looking forward to see the real solutions of how we can do or how we can provide proactive diagnosis to our patients right so there's a lot of exciting work uh, ad- ahead of us and uh, global logic is doing uh, all that work for our clients uh, by providing all these solutions however i am pretty sure that with a lot of intelligent brains that will be sharing their ideas there's a lot of potential for us to build new solutions with the ideas that you guys are going to generate and we'll take it forward to our customers and definitely provide value uh, based services to the patients across the planet so that's what we are at uh, healthcare i'm open for any kind of questions uh, anything around this industry i'm keen to uh, you know answer
I'm going to quickly glance through questions. Uh, just in a lot of questions around the finale, a lot of questions around prototypes. Guys, we'll answer everything um, in a. I'll, I'll take up these generic questions in the end, if you don't mind. Um, any case study or successful product, Gigi, this is directly for you, not even attempting. Thank you so much, Hack to Skill team. Gigi, you want to read that and take it? Yeah. So, uh, okay, uh, successful product. But, oh, sure. So without taking a customer name, I can share uh, one of the successful products that we have, uh, you know, built for one of our very prestigious customer. It is already in progress. So if you have uh, in today's world, especially in our industry, many of us get into a problem of cervical or vertigo where we have pains in our back. Right now, if the pains are in the back, it could be either a bone issue or it could be uh, a la um, improper nervous transmission that is happening. Okay, I personally myself have a vertigo problem and it is because of the improper simulation of the nerve signal that goes to my brain. So there are solutions that we have built for some of our customers wherein we do provide implants that goes into our spinal cord. Those implants are put near the spinal cord. They send right signals through our body or through the nervous system to the brains and hence those pains are being controlled by those nervous signals. How much signal has to go depending upon the age and different factors of a person or a patient's body is being controlled by a software. So that software is being is being developed, tested in our labs at Global Logic India Centers. That is one of the products that we have done. And Ajit, if you want and to add. I, would, I, I will just add to that, uh, Gigi. It's not just about one product, but <clears throat> what I want to highlight here is we are cutting across the span in healthcare. Gigi gave an example of MedTech, which is to do with devices, but we are present in almost every service. You talk about fitness, we are working in that space. You talk about clinical trials, we are working in that space. You talk about uh, medical insurance, we are in that space. And last but not the least, we have seen a big boom in uh, people owning pets during COVID. We are also in the pet care space. So it's it may not be human lives, it's lives of our pets, but we are just cutting across the entire span of healthcare. Uh, Ajit and Gigi, there's one more question. Rex Beck has asked. <clears throat> Hack to skill team, can you highlight this? It's it's just uh, yeah, it's so many solutions in health tech. It has nowhere close to having a medical. Um, this is it's just commentary. I don't know if we can how much everybody all the I, healthcare. I, you yeah, I, yeah. I, I may not uh, really comment on that statement right now as to where India yeah. is here. I think there yeah. have been a lot of advance, advancements, so I don't want to pull anything down. All I can say is 30 hacks is an opportunity for people to actually demonstrate some of the ideas around these themes where you think, you know, if India needs to take the next step, we are really looking forward to some futuristic ideas. So I would urge teams to come up and present something which really catches everybody's attention and we'll be more than happy to take that forward as an organization. Yes, chain starts with you, Ajit. The chain starts with you. So Rexbeck, maybe your your idea gets shortlisted and uh, it makes a difference. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to uh, the presentation just in the interest of time. I want to make sure every track gets covered because anybody's track is can be shortlisted so i'm going to go, quickly move to our next track on telecom amit i'll bring you back in and i'll start sharing the screen and uh, if you can please pick it up sure thank you ruchi uh, good evening friends uh, so as we know right telecom companies are at the core of digital transformation irrespective of the sector and they are enabling the transformation for all the industries while telecom continue to be, you know, the major driver for economic recovery as well post pandemic, it is very critical for telecom companies or communication service providers to transform into the digital service provider to stay competitive and to stay relevant. And the, it increases the complexity, especially for the telecom companies, because they have to deal it in the two ways. One, ensure the successful transformation of their own business. And at the same time, be the enabler for the digital transformation of all the other sectors in our global economy. That is what makes this sector and the use cases in this sector more fascinating. 
and they are not you know they are like horizontal across all the industry it touches all the aspects we talked about some of the use cases by gaurav and ajit on the telemedicine for example how it is getting enabled probably we'll see in the upcoming sessions on the digital twins or industry 4.0 so telecom has a vital and a key role to play and enable these kind of use cases and that's getting pretty segregated while the respective industries are building those use cases telecom industry is also you know building those use cases and that's why it is making most exciting time in the telecom world when it is touching billions of lives and transforming the way we live we consume the data imagine the total number of mobile subscriptions are already 8.2 billion which is more than the number of people on the planet and 5g is already 660 million subscriptions globally while all this is happening we see that there are challenges for example the cost for each of the operator is increasing even if you relate to the india take example of the top 3 operators in india they have to launch the 5g they have to provide more services voice and data are basically the hygiene item but in addition to that what you are getting in prepaid or in your postpaid subscription plan and that's how you would determine whether to get on that you know operator or not so there is increased competition and at the same time it is a need for the higher business agility how their legacy systems are getting continuously increased how the customer expectations are driven by the digital first giants and while these challenges are also providing the opportunities and probably these opportunities is for you guys as well to pick up one of the idea one of the theme to address one of the challenge it could be in the area of ott or omni channel media experience how we can create some of the ott service and provide some of the you know uh, differentiating factor how do we monetize the ott data how i can help operator to create the new revenue streams to counter the arp squeeze that is happening it could be by iot implementation for example the connected vehicle platform smart home smart cities or telematics using the big data 4g 5g or even gaming right dg was we are talking about the gaming as well industry 4.0 or how i can have a platform as a approach and build the systems of engagement systems of record systems of insight that can help me to improve my efficiency these are some of the ways you know these challenges can be converted into the opportunities and there is one thing constantly with you that is a mobile phone with each one of us and your mobile is having entire world in it so more than anyone your telecom operator knows complete insight about you where are you what are you doing what are you browsing what are you doing and that provides the amazing monetization opportunity by leveraging that data and there could be two kind of a use cases that one can build one could be more user centric it could be cross selling up scaling there could be the other opportunity how you can predict hey there is going to be the call drop and i help improve on the user experience and these are some of the services that you see on the screen that's where global logic is helping our customers to make an impact right from the user experience enabling the self service ecosystem to doing some front end digital development enabling the platform monetization building the iot platforms across different areas or enabling the ott services like netflix of the world or building some of the solutions leveraging 5g or unified communications we in next slide we'll talk about what are the other things we are doing in uh, telecom world we are basically the you know one of the largest uh, delivery unit across global logic with 4000 strong engineers across the world we have built close to 350 plus telecom product across each of the segment that i talked about in the iot segment in the 5g segment in the you know ott segment in the self care segment as well as on the oss and the bss side we are working with the leading operators in the north america in the europe as well as in the apac the top two leading operators in the india we are helping them to transform we are helping them to launch the newer platforms whether they are related to the health whether they are related to the connected vehicle platforms we are helping them leveraging our experience across the industries and how they can monetize and provide the different iot services or 5g services to the end users so we touch right from the chipset to the applications complete end to end uh, services to global logic to our customers at uh, global logic basically it is a convergence of technologies converging the digital and the physical world it could be you know 
use cases like autonomous vehicles, remote surgery, digital twins, immersive experience, uh, you know, smart stadiums, co-watching experience, or intelligent factories, or metaverse, virtual gaming, and many more. And I'm excited and looking forward to see how you, you know, effectively use the connectivity and the technology to provide and enable this new offering to the telecom consumers or help the operators to improve their efficiency and reduce some of uh, their cost. So with that, once again, best luck. I look forward to interact with you guys in the 30 hacks. Pretty excited. We are four days away from the big event. Any questions, queries for me? So anything so is working to reduce the radiation 5G? We are primarily working on, because with the 5G anyway, the radiation would be less, right? Because there would be many small cells deployed across and it would help to reduce some of the radiation. And we are helping to, you know, adapt more and more 5G to our customer, how we can create some of the private cells using the 5G network, enable some of the IoT use cases. IoT, there is a huge scope in the healthcare. In fact, uh, how do I perform the remote surgery? Earlier, one of the challenge was uh, connectivity with 5G. There is more reliable network with a low latency. And I think we should be able to implement beyond the teleconsultation, more use cases in the healthcare. Any other questions, Ruchi, you see on 5G? Uh, no, I think there's a lot of Lakshmi. I think Amit already answered. There's a lot of work on the telecom industry that Google Logic is doing. Uh, there's a recording. You can listen to this again. Now we are helping the telecom industry. I think we Amit gave a very, very good dope on that already. There are some questions on scope of IoT in healthcare and IoT in GL. Amit, can you or Gigi, can you... Ajit, any of you take a shot at that and IoT and Ashish, even you in, in industrial. So people are asking what is the scope of IoT and careers in IoT. I see some questions around. Do you guys, any of you want to answer that? Oh, there is an immense oh. work we had. Oh, sorry, Ajit, go ahead, please. No, no, uh, Amit, uh, please go ahead. But what I was going to say, Ruchi, was uh, I am definitely touching upon that topic as part of uh, what I will cover later. Ah. Okay. And I can uh, possibly talk about a few others as well at that time. Awesome. Okay, we'll wait for you to. Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. All right. So I don't see anything else on uh, on telecom. I'm just going to bring my screen back up. Just give me ten seconds for it to refresh. Yeah. Okay. Streamia takes a while to kind of get back to share screens. All right. I'm going to call my uh, next speaker, Ashish. And Ashish, you're going to cover industrial. I'm going to bring up the screen and then over to you once I'm up, Ashish. Sure. Okay. So while Ruchi brings in the screen, uh, you know, a uh, good evening, everyone. And it's absolutely a passionate crowd seems from the questions, you know, which you have specifically for the hackathon coming in and what global logic really does under, under a different vertical. So, you know, thanks guys for this. Uh, simply put, what an industry is, is basically a combination of 3M, which is a <clears throat> man plus a machine plus material, right? Simply people coming in together under a under factory area and producing goods. So, and I don't need to say uh, basically the way this industry is kind of, you know, growing leaps and bounds and it's already a multi-trillion industry. What we have, uh, Ruchi, can we move to the next slide? Yeah. So uh, normally, whatever programs which get executed under the industrial vertical are kind of, you know, categorized in the three buckets. Uh, one is uh, something which is very, very close to everyone's heart is the robotics and the automation, which is something which is kind of coming up big, where it is more, uh, you know, simply put uh, synergizing the robotics with automation to deploy and manage the software robots, which can actually emulate the human actions and they can interact with the digital systems and the software. Uh, second which is again more of a bread and butter of any kind of a manufacturing industry is kind of where we program a lot of solutions which can be embedded into the lathes, the drilling machines, heavy equipment for any kind of a manufacturing, which is more of a bread and butter. And third is a very, very classified category under the industrial vertical, which is specifically catered to the programs which get developed on the energy and the utility side. You know, and when we say energy and utilities, it is more around the basic necessities of electricity, water and natural gas. So some of the solutions which can be developed under this bucket are like AI analysis of big data to prepare any country for a greener future. You know, we are, we talk a lot about the sustainability. Uh, AI powered solutions to predict or prevent some of the outages in these, you know, basic necessities of life. 
so while uh, global logic as a company is working under these buckets we have kind of you know over the period of 20 years developed some very very niche capabilities which are actually needed to cater to any kind of an industrial solution and again something which is uh, very close and uh, you know it, it appears complex but it is pretty interesting as well which is the embedded space and under the in, in, uh, industrial embedded space we kind of you know provide solutions which can supervise specific operations you know which are <clears throat> more i would say related to the mechanical and the electrical parts of this overall machines and these are nothing but actually programmable operating systems which perform specific tasks uh, you know to drive the machines it can be as simple as driving some motion uh, you know motors it can be as simple as uh, you know uh, managing the overall uh, speed of a particular uh, assembly line it can be any networking equipment as well second uh, one of the important things you know which amit also touched during the telecom is basically the connectivity and i'm pretty sure people who are kind of you know close to the manufacturing sector uh, you have heard the term of IIoT, which is kind of, you know, inter industrial internet of things, which is more of a convergence of operational technology and information technology by using smart center sensors and actuators. So we provide a lot of solutions using this capability, you know, specifically, and there was one question on the IoT, using this IoT capability for smart remote sensoring, asset management, etc. Uh, third, which is again something which is very interesting and uh, coming up big is the cloud transformation and cloud and deployment where almost a lot of the customers are expecting the systems to be moved from on-prem to cloud. So this is also one of the niche areas, you know, which kind of, you know, we have developed a capability specifically for a large industrial giants, big data and analytics, which is more about a combination of data management, data governance, uh, data curation, data processing, and last but not the least, which is, which is pretty important, which helps a lot of us to take a lot of business decisions specifically on the data analytics. Uh, asset management is also one of the very qualified uh, stream under as a capability where you know it basically takes care of the overall life cycle management of an asset specifically from the procurement to the overall you know disposal of a particular asset uh, and again something which i'm pretty sure a lot of you might be interested is basically the twin digital technology which is more of the computer vision you know where we use the real data world from reliable sources to create some simulations and Nothing, you know, not more, the, nothing more important as AR, VR and MR is something which, you know, which can kind of, you know, bring this capability to the table. Uh, moving on to, uh, uh, can we move to the next slide, Ruchi? Uh, this talks about basically the industry 4.0 as a framework. So, you know, there was a time when people were into this, uh, you know, industry 1.0 and a lot of you, probably some of you might have you know, uh, seen those days of industry one, how the industry has traversed from 1.0 to 4.0 now, as of now. And in this current global crisis, you know, manufacturing and industrial companies, they have to actually focus a lot on building business continuity because we know that abrupt shutdown of any industry basically leads to a loss, loss of financial losses. So uh, they have to really shorten the overall recovery time. And industry 4.0 is basically all about adoption of this automation and digital technologies to make sure that the overall recovery of an industry is kind of you know pretty fast and they are able to minimize their losses so while we see the important tenets on the slide which are kind of you know important for any industry 4.0 to accelerate any corporate uh, i would specifically empathize uh, you know emphasize on four themes which are pretty important for you know industry 4.0 <clears throat> one is the interconnection basically more of an ability of machines devices and sensors and people to connect and communicate with each other via the iot uh, the information transparency, which is again, you know, pretty important, which is a lot of data which gets closed for important business decision making. Then the technical assistance, which is more of a facility of the systems to assist the human again to, you know, do some kind of a problem solving and decision making and uh, decentralized decisions, which is also a very important part, which is the ability of the cyber physical systems to make the decisions on their own. Uh, Last is basically where I would like to really emphasize, you know, more on the trends which are kind of, you know, upcoming in the industrial vertical. One is the IIoT, which we have already spoken about, which is more about the advanced engineering strategies for root cause analysis, predictive and preventive maintenance, which is coming up big time in the overall asset management solution. Big data reporting and analytics, a very interesting piece because we all know that, you know, it's kind of, you know, all machines you know which are kind of you know doing the talking so there's a lot of data which gets produced by the machines on a daily basis in a real time 
so data analytics they can you know find the flaws in their existing overall life cycle of a particular machine and then they can create solutions which can you know produce better forecasting models as well and these processes once they get into the place they can further be refined and kind of you know enhanced using ai and ml as a technology sustainability which we spoke about is uh, more about you know the corporates which are becoming very very sensitive about making sure that the overall solutions which are uh, derived or which are developed are resource efficient and they have net zero emissions uh, which is i would say in fact the number one priority as of now from the global environment perspective so we are also developing uh, solutions which take care to reduce the energy emission and creating more efficient machine machinery and even to that matter recycling of this overall waste material last but not the least again the usage of ai ml uh, vr ar which basically you know enables sort of machines and equipments to make independent decisions and carry out some smart tasks so this is what we normally you know uh, do in the overall industrial vertical i would say uh, on the hack uh, you know something which we normally call out is hack together snack together and innovate with one mind so all the best guys uh, for the hack thank you over to you ruchi i like the snack together ashish the most yeah <laughs> and i'm going to stop sharing for one minute uh, robotics but has global logic done something on metaverse and web 3 wow so nice i was yeah ashish yeah. go ahead i was reading a quote from sunil singh uh, today on web 3 so please so i can talk about robotics automation definitely robotics automation is something where we have developed a humanless uh, you know a warehouse we have kind of created a solution to make the overall warehouse as humanless which is when which is kind of operated by machines and robots on the metaverse of course we are doing a lot of work on the ar vr side you know trying to create a lot of uh, i would say virtual reality world which can help lot of solutions you know work and a uh, lot of uh, you know basically help us to uh, interact with the virtual reality world so there are a lot of solutions which are definitely getting developed there as well thank you ashish Just to what ashish has said we are also working on some of the use cases on co watching helping the some of the industry workers by using the metaverse and on web3 i think we are doing some of the cool stuff on the blockchain in the energy sector and some other sectors as well Thank you. Uh, with one eye on the clock, I'm going to quickly move to our uh, last but really important track, which is finance. I'm going to bring up my screen and Ajit invite you to take it Thank up. Thank you, Ruchi. Yeah. Thank you. And I realize that I'm probably standing between the people and the results. So, although this is a topic very close to my heart, I'll try to be as crisp as possible. So. Um, guys you know this is probably one of the one of the fields which has seen a radical shift uh, through technology right we used to work with uh, which if we can move further we used to uh, work with banks and, and when, when i'm saying I'm, i'm not talking about the it but we as individuals have been interacting with banks we started going to branches then we started using atms then we started using online banking and today traditional banks are being challenged by fintechs so we are getting into a phase where we are possibly not even using a bank but a fintech similarly on the insurance side there were traditional insurance firms and today there are insurance firms which have different models of providing insurance covers uh, some insurance companies today are providing almost like a pay as you go they will charge you a premium based on how much you drive rather than a fixed premium for a year right trends are emerging and the traditional businesses are moving towards uh, digital businesses what used to be brick and mortar moved to click and mortar and now they are just on a mobile phone right so just imagine the transformation through this and i'm very glad to say that we have been part of this transformation as global logic we've been working on each and every aspect as you can see on the slide and i'm not going to talk to all of that but if you look at the span of services right from retail banking to investment banking to reg regulatory uh, technologies to the fintechs and the uh, insur insurtechs that are out there we have been part of this complete transformation in the financial services industry right from cloud to analytics to digi banking to 
providing new customer experience services. With that, I'm not going to talk about what we do, but I'm really more excited about what's the future, which is where I would really like to see new ideas uh, popping in, right? Uh, so, Ruchi, if we move forward, I have tried to capture here what is the future for financial services, and I call it a financial digiverse. What do typically customers expect? A very rich customer experience, an autonomous ecosystem, and I'll touch upon that in a while, security and speed. These are the basic things that any client would expect out of financial services. Let me start with autonomous ecosystem. In the past, like I said, we used to either go to a branch or withdraw cash and make transactions through cash. Then came credit cards, but you're still popping a physical credit card out of your wallet. Let me ask you, how many of us actually interact with the bank today? We either use a Google Pay, we use a Paytm. Sometimes we just shop online through an Amazon or just book an Uber ride. Do you even interact with the bank anymore? This is how a lot of our banking is actually becoming more autonomous. Now imagine this getting extended to an ecosystem. What do I mean by that? I'll give you a small example. Let's say you buy a home. You need a home loan. You need a home insurance. Then you need to buy electronic items. You need to buy furniture. You need to prepare some legal documents for this. Imagine all of this coming on a common ecosystem platform, which is facilitated by a financial services organization. Life will be very easy. You don't even have to bother about approaching them differently and making different financial transactions. It's all taken care of through one single ecosystem. That is where people want to head, less overheads and speed. All this requires a very rich customer experience, right? And how is that provided? We already are familiar with mobile banks. We are already familiar with wallets. But it's all moving towards how we can use more personalized offers where the financial services are profiling me and coming back to me with very, very custom offers for me, which I would love to sign up for straight away, right? Which requires a lot of profiling for me. That's part of analytics and AI. Then look at how AI and ML can be used. We are all familiar with chat bots and conversational bots and all of that, right? robo-advisors, which make us financially aware of our life goals. But now think about sentiment analysis. You could easily read my face. You could record my voice, understand whether I'm angry, happy, sad. And I can actually start offering you different services based on how you speak, how you appear, what is your energy level, right? Think about automated claim settlements. There could be pictures of a car which is damaged in an accident and it can easily compute what should be the claim set to, claim amount to be settled for repairs of that car without any manual intervention. We are then talking about cryptos and NFTs today. We are talking of decentralized finance where we may not even have like a bank in between. Everything using blockchain, right? That is the future, guys. And somebody touched upon IoT. We know how IoT can be used for, say, vehicles. We know about wearables. They can be connected to IoT. But think about the future. There is so much of a focus today on sustainability. And countries are talking about carbon trading and reducing the carbon footprint. Organizations are talking about carbon trading. How are we going to track that? We are going to need a lot of IoT-based assessments to really start tracking some of this to be very authentic about the carbon footprint. We as an organization are engaged in so much of CSR. We have commitments to plant a million trees. How are we going to track that? We'll use geotagging to ensure that we have achieved our goals, reduce the carbon footprints. And in future, if we have to come out with a carbon instrument for global logic, we'll be prepared to prove that we are there. Right? That's how I, the power of IoT can be used in the future. And of course, when it comes to security, we know the new trends in cybersecurity and biometrics, the way it is changing, we might easily move away from uh, dual authentication to just somebody reading my face and authenticating me even for my bank transactions, right? So what is the future I would like to look at? Maybe someday I walk into a branch which is uh, developed using Metaverse, right? I don't even have to really use a mobile phone. Maybe I just get into a Metaverse, I talk to a, to a, a, a 
relationship manager there get my work done and avail of this entire ecosystem this is un, there is unlimited opportunity to incorporate technology into the financial services and so many ideas that at least come to my mind and i'm pretty sure some of these ideas will cross your minds and that's what we will look forward to in this hackathon how can you bring in some cutting edge ideas that can help evolve new services for financial services right i will probably take a pause and end there ruchi i'm conscious of time but i am very very excited about it thank you so are we of the possibilities of everybody is pinging that iot is a common topic blockchain technology there are a lot of questions but the one screaming question is results results please can we get the teams results oh my god so good luck teams and thank you first of all i want to say thank you everybody uh, i know it takes time to uh, then it's nothing that happens without prep guys so while you did your prep we did ours to make sure that this webinar adds value to all of you so thank you ajit gorav uh, ashish and amit for uh, for being here and for sharing your thoughts and guys you will interact with this group more you will we will have a zoom call with all of our top teams and you will get to interact a lot more with us all right i'm not i know i'm i'm literally taking away time from all of you so i'm going to bring up my screen back and we are going to announce some uh, super cool things including the name of the uh, top teams just give me all right we back with the screen all right so before i announce the the top teams there is a laughter night we spoke about and uh, everybody kept asking me this was by the way uh, gentlemen everybody with me on the call the famous question last time was who is the comedian who is coming so gigi any guesses gigi any guesses no ruchi no i can give everybody one clue his name is very close to gorav gupta's name <laughs> because it is gorav gupta gorav gupta <laughs> You you gave away the answer, not a clue. I know, I know. Gigi didn't Gigi didn't take it. Gupta Ji, I think people call him Gupta Ji. I am not a big. No, that's a different one. Gupta Ji is a different one. Gupta Ji is a different guy. Okay, okay. So I am not a. But apparently, my team was super excited, and um, and I'm kidding. I saw some of his shows. Very very good. So everybody who's watching, uh, we'll send an invite for March twenty sixth. especially the teams who are in the top 25 you are definitely get an invite uh, and an invite pass to this one so just to excite you a little bit more all right now i want to play some tarada the i don't have a background music playing but i wish it was there but uh, we are going to announce before i do that again thank you so much everybody who participated we are very very happy you did it uh, keep following us on all of our pages we keep doing campaigns social media announcements etc etc so we want to make sure that you are connected to gn and we want to thank everybody who registered and participated and with that let me go ahead and go next and announce the top teams uh, and everybody on the call if you can clap along with me i think it will make the moment stronger so let me bring up top teams in no, in random order team ssk Team Wolf Pack Society, Trouble Markers, V Doc Realizers, Safies, Team Phoenix, Diva Coders, Pardosh. My God, the names are Doctor Virus, Leaders, Oik, Junkies, Balco, Hackify, Infinity, Infinites. My God, how do you pronounce Infinite it? Infinite Zeros. Infinite Zeros. Oh. Infinite Zeros, the Expeditors, Team Mumbai, Codex, Check Your Health, Habibi, and Palmo Create. So, congratulations! Congratulations to all the teams. This is not a ranking, guys. <coughs> This is uh, all the top teams selected. This is not in order of ranking. many 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 congratulations to everybody and we'll go to the comment box and check if any of you winners are here we want to hear your excitement screaming through the comments but um, 
very happy to announce this <coughs> also want to make a couple of quick agenda announcements everybody has been asking in the chat what is the itinerary what is the agenda what happens in the 30 hours here is what you see so we start at 11 am on saturday there is a mandatory registration ceremony opening ceremony and registration you would need to be there for us to register you as a team if you are not there you don't get registered and you don't participate so you have to be there the hack begins there is an instagram contest there is a 30 hacks got talent contest gorav gupta live there is quiz and of course in the middle of all this you will be doing your hack uh please make sure you are building your product in those 26 hours of coding only because the jury is very smart they know how much you can do in 26 hours don't try to be super smart we are going to give you a hack wizard which is going to work with you very very closely all of your ideas need improvement we went through all of the ideas a lot of the people you see on the call were prelim jury and they all have great suggestions to make your ideas even greater so we are going to make your ideas worth flying high in the sky so be with us we're going to assign hack wizards we're going to prep you on how to do your presentation how to do your demo submissions everything so demo submission check in codes you will be guided on everything we we'll have a zoom call with all of you very very shortly and of course very important 5 o'clock on sunday is when the eval round is there every team will be given 7 minutes 5 minutes of presentation and 2 to 3 minutes of questions we will prep you for all of this and then 9:30 pm we announce the gala winner there are going to be three winners one winning team one first runner up and one second runner up and uh, that's it that's the agenda of uh, of the 30 hours for all of you everybody who was asking we will publish this we'll have a zoom call we'll talk to you guys it's not going to be a webinar mode it's going to be a zoom mode and uh, we are going to see you look at you which is more exciting we're looking forward to it and we'll interact with you it's not going to be a webinar call so Let's thank everybody. Very excited! Congratulations again to all the winners, and uh, many, many congratulations. I'm going to stop sharing and come back to the stream screen and see if we have any of our winners um, on the comment box. Okay, congrats! Yes, selected Abhishek. Pane selected Abhishek. Where to go? Very nice. Maza aagya. People are saying, "All right." <laughs> Somebody okay. is asking, are we going to get participation certificates? I think, guys, there is going to be a lot more in store. Just hang on there. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be a lot more in store. You have no idea. Global Logic believes in work hard, party harder. So the hack is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a uh, yeah, Amit and Gigi when Gorav came and he did the first hack. He was telling me, I remember we were doing a physical hackathon. So I remember yes. Gorav says going like. are they doing a hackathon are they having fun because even during the jury round I, it was very very interactive and i think uh, uh, we are going we try we'll try to make it interactive we we'll try to make it a good learning experience guys we want to also give you wizards who can up your game and you will be interacting with a lot of very very senior technical folks from global logic so we are happy to be doing this yeah, yeah and i I, i will only say everyone has 3 to 4 more days to go and in in the world of technology that's a lot of time so guys you know up your game raise the bar there is a lot 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 more that you can do even within the ideas you have submitted so you don't have to stick to just what you have thought so far around that idea think about how you can enhance it even further yes we are going to make the announcement of this these top teams on social media check your names i think there is a lot of scope like ajit said we really want to urge you to use the latest technology think of new solutions think of new ideas we want you to be defining the future and looking at very very future forward ideas so we're going to push you for that we're going to support you for that and we're going to give you an environment to do that right so make it innovative guys make it innovative yeah get us really excited yeah you will be even more excited when we tell you the jury names so wait for that two of our jury got announced by the way uh, we announced it on social media we have some very reputed ctos and very reputed senior folks joining us so 
it's going to be very globally. exciting yeah globally from global locations actually ajit none of our juries from india all of the time zones we had to manage was because it was all cst pst so you're going to be presenting to a global jury i think it's a, it's a it's a very very good opportunity and um, i'm i'm happy you guys have this opportunity nobody does a marketing hackathon i would participate but nobody does it so thank you so much on that note um, congratulations again we we'll post these names on social media flaunt it tell your family tell your friends i have been selected for global logic 30 hacks and they should wait for you to become a celebrity right so we're going to do a press release around this if you win your team and your names are going to go in the press and it's going to be very very exciting so all the best thank you one weekend but it's going to be worth it so thank you so much thank you hack the skill team on that note we are good to close we're 6 minutes up good to close thank you and all the best to everyone thank, thank you and all the best red rocket thank you